Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. Don't miss our live post-game show coming up tonight after Game 2 of the Heat vs. Pacers. We'll have live video breakdown. Had a ton of people in last time. It was great, so don't forget to join us. Now let's talk about some wacky lineups that Scott Brooks ran out there. And let's make one thing clear, he's behind the eight ball with Serge Ibaka not being available to play. However, it doesn't mean with Nick Collison, he doesn't have some defensive ability and things to do out there. Yet when you strip away what they have and you look beyond the talent and look at what the philosophy is and how they play together like a team, you'll see some severely lacking fundamentals on the Thunder side. The first lineup we'll look at was Scott Brooks' second most used last night, and its benefit was negligible, balancing a high offensive rating with a high defensive rating as well. The Spurs recognize that OKC likes to switch the pick and roll often, so a simple splitter Parker screen gets Russell Westbrook on splitter. This is more a function of poor defensive philosophy since they could have tried harder to stay with their men. Now that Russ had to mark splitter, the Spurs just spaced the floor and worked to get a good angle for the entry pass. Russ had no chance. The Spurs were more than happy to trade that mismatch for splitter on Karan Butler, and rather than get Butler attacking, KD wants to set a screen for Reggie Jackson. It almost works as he gets free on the pop, but Kawhi's long arms, and more importantly, long fingers, get a hand on this shot, which is unheard of for a KD midrange to get blocked. Now let's look at the Steven Adams at center with four guards that Brooks experimented with in the second quarter. I would think with four guards, the offense would flow and the ball would move quick. But just the opposite happened as the ball got hung up waiting for ball screens while the other players stood in place spotting up. Strangely, there were openings when attacking a lineup that featured Manu at power forward, but Reggie Jackson opted to shoot an incredibly difficult leaner rather than pass to wide open teammates whose men helped one pass away. OKC was easily defended initially when it went to a spread offense, but Russ uses his incredible speed to get to the rim. While he doesn't finish the initial shot inside, when the rebound does fall into his hands, he gets the layup to fall. This lineup was out of sync with no sense of purpose from anyone, just five individuals moving on the court independent of each other. Looking very stagnant and no chance at an offensive rebound on this shot. They also struggled to defend, even if the matchups weren't so far off. Just look how Karan Butler inexplicably goes underneath the screen for Danny Green. Meanwhile, the Spurs offense got wonderful side-to-side -side action, bringing Duncan out high on a screen so Adams was nowhere near the basket, and Jeremy Lamb taking a page from Russell Westbrook with the playground reach-around, allowing Bellinelli an easy two points. Even with what should be a good defensive lineup, the Thunder have problems executing rotations correctly. The Spurs run horns with the initial ball screen, and for some reason, KD and Russ freeze in place, neither pressuring Parker or getting back in position to defend. This forced Perkins to pick up Diaw, and then KD had to guard Tim Duncan. Instantly, the Spurs get Duncan in the post for the easy post-up bucket. The Thunder were able to get back in the game with Collison and Perkins out there, and here's a good example of Collison's excellent help rotation, stunting to stop Duncan from taking a quick dribble to the hoop, and Russ rotates nicely to pressure the shot. All is not lost with Ibaka not playing. Collison has his own way of being very effective on defense, expertly knowing exactly when to double team and pressure Duncan in the post. Again, Collison contains beautifully in ice defense, then jumps out to contest the Kawhi shot, allowing Perkins to stay home, box out, and grab the board. And Russ was able to take advantage of Duncan being slow getting back and split her out of position to get right to the front of the rim for the finish. Perkins got tired and Brooks went to Adams at center with Durant at power forward. This allowed Pop to use Diaw with the power forward, a lineup the Spurs are very effective with. Adams comes out way too far on the hedge and Durant is not used to rotating out of the four spot, allowing a gorgeous Baines finish. You can see how rote the OKC offense is when there is only one option at a time. The KD pinned down is well defended by Manu, then they have to wait for the weak side pin down to shape up, and because of the lack of movement, Baines could come over to help pressure the miss. 
Adams really struggled to defend the pick and roll. Even though Reggie Jackson is clearly forcing Manu right, Adams still goes for his fake towards the middle of the court. Manu is way too tricky for the young center and gets the reverse layup. It's a simple adjustment for Adams, really. Just stop coming up so darn high on his hedge. Contain the ball handler till Reggie can get back in position. If not, forget Rip City, it'll be Layup City. So there you have it, sports fans. Even though the Thunder are really behind the eight ball, are going to have a hard time winning this series without Ibaka, what they've been built on is out-talenting you. And when you get against a team like the Spurs that is very solid, very good on the offensive side, and then solid on the defensive side, you need to have more. You need to have a defensive system that will limit good shots. You need to have an offensive system that gets people involved and not falling asleep in the corner for 10 straight possessions. And this is what we have on the Thunder side. And it's a problem when you lose a guy like Ibaka, they'd have nothing left to offer. Now, this series could still go six, seven games. When you have guys like Russell Westbrook and, and Kevin Durant on your team, you can never count them out. But as it is now, it was a, extremely frustrating watching that game one. And I can only hope that Scott Brooks watches the tape and figures out some better adjustments than running Kevin Durant at the five. Well, don't forget our live postgame show coming up tonight after game two of the Heat versus the Pacers. And also, don't forget at B-Ball Breakdown, we're not a channel, we're a conversation. You win. Ah.